right, so I know nobody here was really expecting a pop quiz, but I do have a couple of questions to ask you all before I get into the really good stuff. So just through a show of hands, how many people see solar panels in use on a daily basis? Okay, now how many people actually use solar panels as a primary source of energy on a daily basis? Okay, so one person. Wow, congrats to you. And the reason why this is, the reason why we don't see solar panels in use, the reason why we don't see solar panels hanging out on people's rooftops all the time is because A, they're expensive. It costs a fortune to buy even a square foot of solar panel material. B, they're inefficient. It takes a whole lot of solar cells to even be able to produce the slightest amount of power. And C, they often require external sources, such as cooling systems, to prevent them from overheating to be able to function properly and produce that teeny amount of energy. Now, this next one is going to come as a bit of a shocker to you, but maybe not. The sun isn't always out. We have night sometimes, and during this time, Solar panels are practically useless. No sunlight energy means no energy to convert. No energy to convert means no electricity. So that's where I come in. I created a solution to this problem, if this wants to work. I created a solution to this problem called the bioluminescent solar concentrator, which I'll talk more about here in just a little bit. But before that, I'd like to discuss why we all should rely on solar energy and where my interest in solar power actually comes from, quite literally overseas in India. So I was actually born in India, and I lived there for a couple of years before moving here. Uh, and my family and I decided to venture back to the motherland on vacation, a whopping 10 years after I had left. And I just remember being so excited to go back. I remember 12-year-old me running through those glass doors at the airport, just waiting to be outside and back where I was born. But I stopped outside, and I just, I, I just, I was shocked. The air was literally pressing down on my skin. It was weighing me down. It was pushing me back. It was hard to breathe. It was hard to just be there. And the issue was in the air. The culprit for this indescribable feeling was pollution from fossil fuels. After doing some research, I discovered that Indian pollution levels, especially in urban areas, often exceed the global average. The number of people, the number of cars, the number of factories was all contributing to a larger amount of pollution. And this pollution was leading to breathing problems, cancer, habitat degradation, global climate change, and so much more. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with many of these byproducts of pollution, and that's because it's not something only India has to face. In fact, it's, a, it's an issue that we face globally. So that's why we turn our attention to renewable energy. Now, with renewable energy, there's no byproducts, there's no pollution, there's no extra stuff going into the air we breathe. It's cleaner, it's safer, it's healthier, it's inexhaustible. But as I mentioned previously, much of renewable energy including solar panels, are inefficient. They're not producing nearly enough energy to be considered economically feasible. And that's the big problem. So then we turn our attention to my solution to this problem, the bioluminescent solar concentrator. Now, I'm sure you all already know what that is just by the name, but I think I'm going to go ahead and explain anyway. So what it is is a piece of glass with a solar panel actually attached on the side of the glass. And there's a thin film of bioluminescent bacteria on top of the glass. But before we understand how this unit of quite weird items works as a whole, we have to understand each of the indiv individual parts, starting off with the bioluminescent bacteria. So bacteria are living organisms which we can't necessarily see with a naked eye. But there are tons of them everywhere. We ourselves are literally walking, talking houses for bacteria. So the purposes of my study, I used E. coli. Oh, thank goodness, you're still here. Usually when I say E. coli, people want to go out the door <laughs> running and screaming. But I perfectly assure you that this bacteria is safe. So to start off, my E. coli wasn't bioluminescent. In order to make it glow in the dark or bioluminescent, I actually had to cut up the DNA of the bacteria and add in the gene for glowing. And voila, we had our bioluminescent bacteria. Now, of course, 
There's a lot more science to it than just that, but for now, that's all we really need to know. Moving right along to the glass layer. Now, this is a special type of glass that you could call a light pipe. It's sanded down on all sides except for the sides where the light is coming in from and the side with the mini solar panel on it. And that's because we want all the light that's coming in to stay trapped there. It's probably just going to bounce around until it finds its way to the solar panel, our last component. So solar panels take light energy from the sun and they convert it into energy that we can actually use or electricity. Unfortunately, solar panels are only about 17% efficient according to MIT. That means out of all of the light that's hitting them, they're only converting about 17% into electricity that we can use. And that's almost nothing. Not only that, solar panels often require a lot of space and they often require a lot more money to be spent on cooling systems, as I mentioned previously. But thankfully, for the purposes of this study, only a small solar panel was used, so space wasn't really an issue. And it was adhesive, so um, there wasn't really a, much of a chance of it burning out. Now it's time to piece together all of these components. So light hits the bioluminescent bacteria, the bioluminescent bacteria starts to glow, and re-emits that light of greater intensity into the glass layer. The glass kind of concentrates that light, shooting it down, streamlining it towards the solar panel. The solar panel takes that light energy and it converts it into electricity that we can use. So after five years of coming up with this idea, modifying it to be as effective as it can be, and hours and hours of testing, no eating, no sleeping, just testing, um, I discovered that this system actually increases the power output by a whole ton. In fact, it doubles the, doubles the amount of power that solar panels can currently produce. And during the night, because bioluminescent bacteria is the only source of visible light, it actually quadruples that amount, which is a whole lot. So now we've established that this system works in the laboratory. But does it work outside of the laboratory? Does it work in reality? That's the real question. And thankfully, the answer is yes. So in addition to being put on top of roofs, kind of like how current solar panels are, uh, the bioluminescent solar concentrator can literally be flipped on its side and integrated into the average window. So the glass of the window serves as the glass of the concentrator, and there's a thin film of bioluminescent bacteria on top of the window. And the solar panel is actually embedded in the window frame. The irony of it is, we don't even have to see the solar panel at all. The solar panel doesn't have direct access to sunlight, but it still produces more energy than current solar panel systems. So many of you are wondering, well, how much does this cost? Am I gonna have to pay a whole ton for this? Well, no, it's actually pretty cheap for the amount of clean energy that it's going to be producing. And the reason why that is, is because bacteria itself, once the original colony is grown, it multiplies infinitely. You can have bacteria farms in no time at all. This bacteria survives for a period of six months, and after that six months, uh, you can just switch it out with new bacteria, kind of like a cartridge system, kind of like how we change our air conditioning filters every couple of months. And the solar panel itself is pretty small, so there's not a lot of money being dedicated to the solar system itself. So many of you may be wondering, what's the exact amount, though? So MIT conducted a cost analysis of current solar panel systems, and I mimicked that uh, exact process for my solar panels, and I discovered that for a 100,000 square foot office building, you'll save $186,000 per year. And this ratio remains the same for any kind of building, houses, apartments, et cetera, but that's still a whole lot of money. So my AP seminar teacher, Mr. Harris, actually asked me, what is this gonna look like? Is it just gonna be like a wall of bacteria tingling? Am I not even gonna be able to look outside? Well, the answer is no. So it's probably gonna look much like tinted glass or stained glass. It's just gonna glow at night. So in addition to increasing the surface area of the building that's viable for energy production, this system has a potential of potentially increasing the aesthetics, make it look a little bit nicer too. So there we have it, a new and renewable type of energy. It works, it's sustainable. It's up to us, though, if we really want to use it. 
Do we want to make the effort of using this cleaner, more reliable source of en energy? So I came up with this project when I was an eighth grader. So that just says that anyone has the ability to identify a problem, to come up with a solution, to stick with it until it becomes this. And I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to rely on this source of energy. But of course, that choice is ours. Thank you.